the God of double portion has placed testimonies in the hearts of our brethren, and they are here to share to the glory of the Almighty God. Shall we welcome the following as they come to share their testimonies? Joseph Okobe. Joseph Okobe, if you hear your name, walk briskly to the altar to share your testimony. Evelyn Sunday. Evelyn Sunday. Friday James. Friday James. Oliver James. Oliver James. Omokaro Joseph. Omokaro Joseph. Mrs. Andrew Oinloye Favor. Mrs. Andrew Oinloye Favor. Okeku Jonathan Odoma. Okeku Jonathan Odoma. Olu Lade Oladele. Olu Lade Oladele. The more you clap, the faster they will come. Straight to the point, exactly what the Lord has done in one minute. Joseph Okobe is my name, Sanctuary Unit. I have come to, I have come to return all glory to God for making the fishment of my heart a reality. I joined this commission last year, November, through the influence of my immediate elder brother with just a prayer point, miracle job. I keyed into all of this, uh, all of the prophetic declaration by the uh, presiding bishop, Bishop David Abioye. I also uh, joined the sanctuary unit and uh, camped here all through Shiloh 211. Uh, Yes, yes, I come here all through Shiloh 211, yes. And six years I have graduated, and uh, five years now I also have completed the mandatory NYSC scheme without a job. But as God may have it, here I come with my appointment letter with the Federal Ministry of Water Resources as a geologist and documented into a level that amazed me and also amaze all the witnesses that are being part of this breakthrough. May his name be praised forevermore. Shout hallelujah. You are the next to share your own testimony of Job. Glory. My name is Friday James. I joined this commission October 2012. I came here with a problem of Job and thank God last week I started a new place, so it's my appointment later. Glory. Shout hallelujah. Somebody is receiving an appointment later next week. Praise Master Jesus. I thank God because before I came here, I was afflicted with sickness, waist pain. My name is Evelyn Sunday. Waist pain and rheumatism in the bone. I can't walk, I can't stand, I can't do anything. If I stand, I will bend. If I stand, I will bend. Good three weeks, I did not walk. So then I come to this uh, ministry. August, the first week of August, I started coming here, worshiping with, worshiping here with all my heart, with all my mind, believing that God will do something in my life. After some time, I was coming, coming, the word of God was putting things in order in my life. To the extent that during the Shiloh, I said, God, this burden, this sickness, this pain must leave me. I started praying during the Shiloh. And after that Shiloh, God healed me perfectly. I can walk, I can strong. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Six months of romanticism humiliated at Shiloh. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. My name is Oliver James. I serve in Sanctuary Keeping, White House. I joined this great commission in 2006, and God has been so faithful. But uh, the enemy said, your finances. I had a tree shop 
and the tree shop went down to nothing. I've been suffering over five years. In Shiloh 2011, during the, before the Shiloh, I had a word from the servant of God said, if you can do what God said you should do, no matter the circumstances, his word shall come to pass. And in Shiloh sacrifice, I key to it. I pledge what I don't have. January, I'm still believing God, nothing to show. February, I'm still believing God, nothing to show. But I say, God, you must prove your word. And to the glory of God, God direct me to a place where I, I, look, I relocated. And from that match, I just took my stock last week. And God makes me double portion, waves of glory. I have just come to return all glory to God. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Business breakthrough by the hand of the Almighty. Praise God. My name is Omokaro Joseph. I come to give God glory for his faithfulness in my life. During Shiloh 2011, I wrote different expectations. Many of them are, is for the, one of them is for the marriage of my younger sister. The other is for a contract in my job. The other is for my younger brother to be united with his family back there in Norway, who was sent back two years ago. To God be the glory, September this year, he was invited to the embassy and was given a permit to go back to be united with his family. By June this year, my younger sister got married, and by November last month, she got united with, his, with her husband in Italy. To God be the glory, during the end of October, somebody came to my shop from DSS and said, can I produce about 500 combat uniform for them within a month or two? I said, yes, I can. To the glory of God, after three weeks, without knowing one single person. But Bishop has always said in this, on, upon this altar that what you are not qualified for, God will qualify you for it. Without any bribery, without any influence, that contract was given to me. And to God be the glory, God gave me speed. Within the period of a month and three weeks, I delivered all the uniforms. To God alone be glory. Give God a clap offering for that wonderful testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Jonathan Okeku. I want to thank God for his faithfulness upon my life. I came in here March 2011 after losing my job in, in Jaws. When I came in, I gave out my house for home sale and I joined the sanctuary unit. <laughs> Believing God to get a job. And in that process, before I lost my job, I've been struggling for over six years to build a house I couldn't build. But with the teaching coming up here every now and then, I keyed into it. By December last year, exactly a year, 23rd, I moved by faith and dug a foundation with just 20,000. But to his glory today, I'm the owner of my own house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The house was built even before nine months. I started 23rd and I moved in 17th of August. May his name be praised forever. God is building houses even for those who don't have jobs. You are the next to build your own house. In the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Mrs. Andrew Oilonye Favor. I am privileged to serve in the sanctuary unit. I am also privileged to be a student and a mother. I got married in 100 level and God has blessed me with two children. I've been believing God for a job even though I was in school. I kept on saying five years is too long to wait for a job, God. But I didn't know how it was going to happen. During the Shiloh 2012, something kept on telling me, move all your things to church. Pack your clothes, your jewelry, and everything. Somehow, I will keep saying, okay, select this one, keep this one. And I kept struggling with myself. So many testimonies came that enabled me to come with my Shiloh sacrifice within the seven days. I brought the Shiloh sacrifice to church on Wednesday. On Friday morning, I received a call from a multipurpose organization that I belong to as a member. It said, rush to do say, now I want to see you. 
I went and I was asked to join the board of directors. To God alone be all the glory. Shout hallelujah. Obedience is bringing blessings everywhere. You are the next to share your testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Oluladi Oladele. Um, in the last, uh, I am privileged to serve in the technical unit. In the last week of, uh, last day of October, my boss called me in and told me that he is having some financial challenges. I will not be able to pay for my service again, which means I was uh, indirectly asked to go. So I had to go that day. Um, that was the week of answers. But to God be the glory, that was the answer I needed. Then um, about two weeks after then, a friend called me from Sierra Leone and said, would I be able to work? I would I like to work in Sierra Leone? Well, I said, if the will of God. And uh, about two weeks after then, another a person called me. They didn't know I, didn't, I had lost the job then. They just called me and said, well, there's an opening in federal ministry. Will I be able to work there? I said, well, if it is the will of God. And to God be glory. This is my appointment letter to the Federal Ministry of Works. I'm here to return all the glory to God. Shout hallelujah. Miracle jobs, healings, deliverances, breakthroughs in business. Our Father is the doer. Shall we lift up our hands and say, Father, we glorify you. You are faithful. In Jesus' precious name. Shall we give the Lord a clap offering? Along, we celebrate, Lord. Yes, in the house, celebrate Jesus. It's time to celebrate His faithfulness. Oh, yes, celebrate Him. Let me hear tenors. You can make it loud. Celebrate, Lord. Time to celebrate Jesus. Celebrate, Lord. Faithful to me, celebrate. Celebrate, Lord. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We celebrate, Lord. In the house, celebrate. 
in a moment like this. In a moment like this. Oh yeah. Remember how you've done. Oh yeah, Lord. Remember how you love. So we celebrate you, Lord. We celebrate, celebrate your faithfulness. We celebrate you, Lord. Just celebrate you, Jesus, in the we house. We celebrate you, Lord. Celebrate you. We celebrate you, Lord. You've been faithful. You've been gracious. We celebrate you, Lord. In a moment like this. In, In a moment, moment like this. We remember. We remember all you've done. We remember. We remember all your love. So we celebrate you, Lord. Oh yes, oh. Our Father told us of all your wonders. And we heard how you parted the Red Sea, how you subdued nations and gave them victory. We heard of gave them harm. Lord, I remember how you saved my soul. I recall how you healed my body. Lord, I remember how you strengthened me. And I won't forget how you stood by me For your goodness, my Lord And your kindness, my King For your faithfulness, Lord I will sing of your love I could sing of your love forever Celebrate! We celebrate you, Lord We celebrate, celebrate you, Lord We celebrate you, Lord Celebrate your faithfulness. We celebrate you, Lord. You've been good, you've been kind. Celebrate. We celebrate you, Lord. In a moment like this. In a moment like this. We remember. We remember all you've done. Remember. We remember all your love. So we celebrate you, Lord. Yes, we celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. We celebrate you, Lord. Love, we celebrate your faithfulness. Celebrate your faith, we celebrate you, Lord. In a moment like this, in a moment like this, we remember, we remember all you've done. Yes, God, we remember all your love. So we celebrate you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we remember you kept our families. I testify, Lord, you kept this charge. Lord, we recount that. You kept our nation. No one will forget how you lifted us. For your goodness, my Lord, and your kindness, my King, and your faithfulness, Lord, we will sing of your love. We celebrate, 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 we celebrate you, Lord. Can we celebrate your kindness? We celebrate you, Lord. We remember, we remember all you've done. Yes, Lord. We remember all your love. So we celebrate you, Lord. In a moment like this. In a moment like this. Yes, we remember all you've done. Yes, we remember all your love. So we celebrate you, Lord. I'd like us to do this song. Yeah, come on. Let me see you clap your hand like this. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If it's been so good to you, I want you to lift your hands. Hey, um, come on, come on, come on. If you know God has been good to you, let me see you put your hands together. Hey, oh. Hey, oh, oh, oh. All right, so let's sing and dance and celebrate. And together, let's praise the Lord. Let's sing and dance and celebrate. Everybody make a joyful noise. Let's sing and dance and celebrate. And together let's praise the Lord. Oh. Let's sing and dance and celebrate. Everybody let's praise the Lord. So let's sing and dance and celebrate. And together let's praise the Lord. Let's sing and dance and celebrate. Everybody make a joyful noise. Let's sing and dance and celebrate. Let's sing and dance and celebrate and together 
to lift up your hands this morning and celebrate Jesus who has ensured that you are here this morning healed and healthy let's give him glory and praise we are not here because of our might not because of our expertise but because his mercy has kept us lift up your hands and let's worship the Lord for his mercy that has kept us give him glory and praise and honor Lord we magnify your name we give you glory, we give you glory, we give you glory. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Are you sure God is hearing your voice this morning? Why not give him all the glory? Thank him and thank him and thank him. Jesus, I bless you. My entire being blesses you this morning. I lift up my praise unto you. I lift up my voice unto you to say thank you this morning. I'm alive because you kept me alive. I'm alive because you kept me alive. I give you glory. I'm a witness of your faithfulness. I'm a beneficiary of your faithfulness. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. You are worthy of all my praise. You are worthy of all my praise. You are worthy of all my praise. I celebrate you, Jesus. Oh, let worship him in the spirit. Oh, Mariana, oh, for you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And all to you, oh, we lift our voice in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. For you are, for you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are. 
before you this morning in awe. We bow before you in adoration. We celebrate your hand at work in our lives. We thank you for your power that has preserved us. Lord, we are not better than others. It's just that we are beneficiaries of your grace and your mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've come again this morning seated at your feet to be fed by you. Send us your word again like you have done in times past. Meet us at the point of our needs. Give everyone the encounter that he desires today. In the name of Jesus, let it be that by the end of this service, everyone will have a reason for coming. Everyone will have a testimony of, your, of this service in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Glorify yourself again this morning. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Shout glory. Shout glory one more time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, 
every time testimonies are shared, they are not in a bid to boast. Rather, testimonies shared are intended to boost your faith in the God who did it for others. Like I've always said, I said testimony is a finished product to the one who is sharing it, but a raw material to the one who is hearing it. It is a finished product to the one sharing it, but raw material to the one hearing it. So that when he hears it, he can use it to produce his own. Now, from all the testimonies shared this morning, um, three or four of them are related to miracle jobs. That's to let you know that there is an anointing for miracle jobs here this morning. There is an anointing in the air for miracle jobs here this morning. That's why I know even in this festive season, it is still possible to collect your miracle job. As many that are jobless today, before 1st of January, you are already employed. As many as are believing God for a better job, between now and the end of this year, God will do it for you. Therefore, lift up your voice and begin to claim your own now. Lord, I take delivery of my miracle job. I take delivery of my change of job. I take delivery of my miracle contract. I am not intended to be jobless. Therefore, Lord, you gave me these hands, make them work in hands. You gave me these hands, make them work in hands. You said, whatsoever I lay my hands upon to do, it shall prosper. Lord, make these hands work in hands. Make these hands work in hands. Make these hands work in hands. By faith, this morning, I take delivery of my miracle job. By faith, this morning, I take delivery of my miracle job. Even in this festive season, when nobody seems to expect it, Lord, I believe you that you can do it. There is no impossibility with you. Therefore, now, by faith, I take delivery of my miracle job. By faith, I take delivery of my miracle job. By faith, I take delivery of my miracle job. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Nothing is impossible with God. Some time ago in a service, a young man came to church. And uh, after the first service, while going out, there was so much rush at the door. And he uh, mistakenly pushed a man. And he said to the man, he said, I'm sorry. He went out again. He came back to the man and said, I'm sorry. And when he was going, the man called him back. He said, who are you? What's your name? And he introduced himself. The man said, that's strange. You told me sorry, and you came back to say sorry again, and then a conversation started. There and then he discovered that the man, the young man, was jobless, and he told him to follow him to his car. When they got to the car, he brought out his laptop, brought out his portable uh, printer, and then brought out a letter, letter paper and gave the man a letter of employment on a Sunday morning in church. <laughs> gave that young man a letter of employment on a Sunday morning in church. It is not impossible. If you believe it, you can collect your own today. Even on Christmas Day, you can still be employed. Even in the crossover night service, you can still be employed. Now receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. What is that thing you are believing God for? Whatever you have come here with this morning as a heart desire. I stand today on this exalted altar to decree that it becomes your portion in the name of Jesus. Someone came to church one day and said, Lord, I'm here this morning because I am told, I was told that it's only you that can handle this, my situation. I am here this morning because I was told, probably you are here this morning because somebody told you that go to that place, you'll be healed. Go to that place, you, 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 you'll be fruitful. Go to that place, this, this, this cause operating in your life shall be broken. Go to that place and that, that spell shall be broken. Probably I hear this morning on account of that, I decree this morning that your expectation shall not be cut off. Whatever may have brought you here this morning, 
because this is the place where God has not failed his people because this is the place where God has always reached out to his people because this is the place where God has changed the stories of men yours will be the next I decree this morning that that issue that brought you here this morning is returning home with you as a testimony Whatever they told you happens in this place that brought you here will happen in your life today. I said will happen in your life today. Whatever they told you occurs in this land of Goshen and it brought you here this morning. God of Goshen will not fail you. The God of Bishop David Olegbo will not fail you. In the name of Jesus. I decree this morning that the heavens be opened over you and the blessings be poured down upon you. I decree this morning that every, uh, every question in your life receives an answer. Every problem in your life receives a solution. Every sickness ravishing your body receives healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and let the saints of God shout it out, Amen. Give Jesus a big, big, big hand as you take your seats this morning. Shout glory! Hallelujah! I counted the privilege this morning to bring you this word in this first service in this special encounter service and it is my prayer that God will give you the encounter that you need in the name of the Lord Jesus we are still continuing our series keeping the fire of your double portion encounter keeping the fire of your double portion encounter That's our series for all of our Sunday services in this great month. Keeping the fire of your double portion encounter. It is not enough to receive a blessing from the Lord but you must know how to keep it. After you have tasted of the goodness of the Lord and you lose it, you become greatly frustrated. So that's why in our Sunday services, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we shall be teaching you how to sustain this encounter there is no doubt about it that we all had our various encounters at Shiloh this year Shiloh indeed was a mountain of encounters and uh, that's the essence of going to church the essence of going to church is not to meet with people the essence of going to church is to meet with God which is an encounter to meet with God. You may meet with people and remain the same way, but you can't meet with God and remain the same. Praise the Lord. You may meet with people. Now, how many people have you met concerning that your issue? And it's still the same. But there is no way a man meets with God and remains the same. Every time a man genuinely has an encounter with God, the ultimate is a change for the better. Praise the Lord. Every time a man has a genuine encounter with God, the ultimate, the end product is always a change for the better. It's always a change for the better. So we come to church 
principally to have an encounter with God. We come to church principally to have an encounter with God. And after you have had that encounter, it now becomes your responsibility to keep that encounter. It now becomes your responsibility to, 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 to maintain, to sustain that encounter. Because if you lose touch with that encounter, your state at the end becomes worse than when you had the encounter. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, sustaining an encounter becomes each person's responsibility. Becomes each person's responsibility. No one can sustain the encounter you have had except you. No one can do it for you except you. So you must get to the point where you personally accept the responsibility on your own to sustain that encounter for your own good. And as long as that, that encounter is sustained, the effect keeps multiplying and multiplying and multiplying and multiplying till it gets to a point where you become a wonder to everybody. And that's what God is making you. I said, that's what God is making you. That's what God is making you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, it's very important that we understand that the ultimate of our double portion encounter at Shiloh was to turn every winner into another man. Was what? To turn every winner into another man. There is what they knew about you before Shiloh, but there is something else they should know about you by now. Before the woman with the issue of blood met Jesus, everybody knew her as the woman with the issue of blood. In fact, she had been so, so used to that state that she was no more identified by her name, but she was identified by her issue, by her problems. But after that encounter, it changed. The new blind Bartimaeus as blind Bartimaeus before he met Jesus. But after the encounter with Jesus, he was no more called blind Bartimaeus. He had another name. Someone is having another name after this service. What they knew of you in 2012, will be different of what they know of you in 2013. They knew you as someone who was barely managing to live. You were surviving to live. But by 2013, everybody will know you as a man and a woman that is in charge. They knew you before as someone who was begging to eat. By 2013, they will know you as someone who is generous and giving out. So the ultimate of the encounter at Shiloh was to turn everybody into another man. Was to turn everybody into another man. Elisha had an encounter in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 15. And when Elisha, when Elisha was following Elijah, they mocked him. But after he had that encounter and he returned, the Bible says all that mocked him bowed down to him. 
Oh, the spirit of Elijah does rest upon Elijah. And they bowed down to him. He went as a mockery. He returned as a celebrity. He went as a mockery. He returned as a celebrity. I decree today that whoever has mocked you before in the year 2013, they shall gather to celebrate you. There are places this year that you could, you, you had no guts to even open your mouth to say anything. I was in a place one day and um, two guys were exchanging words. And then the other one told said, keep quiet, my friend. He said, when businessmen like us are talking, a trader like you should keep quiet. He said, when businessmen like us are talking, a trader like you should keep quiet. I said, what's the difference between a businessman and a trader? He said, businessmen bring containers. Traders come to take from them. He said, when businessmen like us are talking, a trader like you should keep quiet. The guy kept quiet. That was the end. That was the end of the, of the confrontation. That was the end. But after some time, that trader became a businessman also. That same trader that was told to keep quiet. When others were talking, he too had a voice. In the year 2013, God will give you a voice. Probably now, in your family, when family meetings being held, you don't, you, you don't have, you don't have, your contribution makes no meaning. They don't ask you for a contribution. They only tell you what they have concluded. Because you have nothing to contribute. In the year 2013, no decision will be taken in your family without consulting you. In that your place of work, no decision will be taken without them consulting you. If you believe it, shout it out of it. And Elisha had an encounter and he returned as another man. He had an encounter and he returned as another man. Praise the Lord. So we all have the responsibility to keep that encounter. Leviticus chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. Leviticus chapter 6. It says, and the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Leviticus chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. The fire shall be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. This encounter shall not go out. This encounter shall not die down. This encounter shall not die down. In the name of Jesus. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8, it says, Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. What is this suggest? It is suggesting that you have the responsibility. If you do nothing about it, you'll be disappointed. If you do nothing about it, you'll be frustrated. Gone are the days when you wait for people to do things for you. One thing that endeared me to this ministry some 17 years plus ago was the fact that they taught us, I found a uniqueness in this place, that this is a place where everyone is taught to accept responsibility and not to shift blames. And that was one thing, that was one quality that endeared me to this ministry. Everyone was taught to accept responsibility. Like God's son, Bishop, Bishop Olegbo will always say, he said, the faith that makes God absolutely responsible for everything is an irresponsible faith. He says, the faith that makes God absolutely responsible for everything is an irresponsible faith. We must endeavor, therefore, to keep 
the fire burning. We must endeavor, therefore, to keep the fire of this encounter burning. May this fire not go out. May this fire that you encountered at Shiloh not go out. May this fire that you encountered at Shiloh 2012 not go out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, one way to keep this fire burning is to be word addicted. Is to be what? Word addicted. Addicted to the word. Why? Because it is God's word that keeps the fire burning. In Proverbs 26 and verse 20, it says, Where no wood is, that wood is referring to the word of God, it says, There the fire goeth out. Proverbs 26 and verse 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So, if you want to sustain your encounter at Shiloh, then there is a need to be addicted to the world more than ever before. Where no wood is, there the fire goes all out. It also suggests that where there is wood, the fire is still on. Where there is wood, the fire keeps burning. The fire keeps burning where there is wood. So without the word, the encounter is lost. Without the word, you stand the chance of losing the encounter. Without the word, it would appear as if you never knew God. Without the word, the encounter will become history. Without the word, the encounter you had at Shiloh will be, will, be, will be reduced to a mere story. Story. It will be reduced to a mere story. Story that you'll be telling your children. Uh, to Shiloh 2012, I was there. You were there, but what happened? You were there, but what happened? Some years ago, God's servant Bishop Wedekwe was sharing with us in a setting. He said when he was still a student in school, he attended a meeting. And something happened at that meeting. He said he encountered God at that meeting that became a landmark in his work with God. And several years after, in ministry, he said he was sharing his encounter with some other men of God of that meeting. And he said, to his greatest surprise, three of them who were with him when he was sharing the encounter were also in that same meeting. Oh, were you in that meeting on that day? I was also there. I was also there. He said, I was also there. He said, but there was no reflection. They were all in the same meeting but there was no reflection of that meeting in their lives. Why? Because they never took time to sustain the encounter. So all they were sharing were stories. But he was sharing encounters. Why the encounters are reduced to stories? My prayer today is that your own encounter will not be reduced to a story. Your own encounter will not be reduced to a story. In the name of Jesus. On the day of Pentecost, the disciples of Jesus had an encounter. And after that encounter, it took the word to sustain it. And today, by the special grace of God, the church of today is a beneficiary of the sustenance of that encounter. After the encounter of the day of Pentecost, it took the word to sustain it. 
in Acts chapter 2 and verse 22. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. They continued in the world. After the encounter, they continued in the world. Why? The encounter came by the world. It also required the same word to sustain it. They continued steadfastly. Steadfastly. Continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. It took the word to sustain that fire. Another time in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, the disciples came together and said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the world. What you give yourself to after this encounter is what determines whether the effect will last or die down. What you give yourself to after this encounter is what will determine whether it will last or die down. He said, we will give ourselves. A little distraction came in Acts chapter 6. After that encounter, a little distraction came in Acts chapter 6. And the intention of that distraction was to kill the encounter. But they were wise enough. And they came out and said, no, we will not allow this thing to die. He said, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Whatever is strong enough to kill this encounter, I curse it this morning in the name of Jesus. We will give ourselves continually, continually, at all times. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world. And in verse 7, it says, And the word of God increased. And the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. The effect began to gain momentum. The effect, as they gave themselves over to the world, the effect of the encounter began to gain momentum. As they gave themselves over to the world, the effect of the encounter began to gain momentum. It was not only affecting them, the effect of the encounter became extensive. It was extended to others. It was extended to others. Listen to me. This encounter you had at Shiloh is not only for you, but it's for your generations. Therefore, as you give yourselves over to the world, everyone around you, everyone that comes in contact with you shall feel and enjoy the effect of that encounter. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Acts chapter 12, and verse 24. He says, But the word of God grew and multiplied. It grew. It multiplied. Why? Because they gave themselves over to it. It grew. It multiplied. The word of God grew and multiplied. Please, fight whatever distraction the devil may bring your way in order to make it to take your focus, shift your focus off the world. Fight it. Fight distractions. Fight the cares of the world. You know, Satan is too subtle. He comes in a way that you need utmost sensitivity to be able to to identify him he's very subtle he's very tricky he's very subtle so if you are not spiritually smart if you're not spiritually sensitive it may just you may just you may just slip away it may just slip away from your hands but that will not be your portion i said that will not be your portion in the name of jesus in acts chapter 19 and verse 20, Acts chapter 19, verse 20, say, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So after that encounter on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says the word of God grew. The word of God mu multiplied. The word of God grew. It multiplied and prevailed. Why? Because 
they gave themselves over to the world because they created time for the world because they gave the world prominence in their lives they created a place for the world that's why they couldn't lose their place So if you must keep this fire burning, then you must be addicted to the world. Let your crave for God's word be on the increase. Let your longing for God's word be on the increase. Let your cravings be heightened. Let your desire for God's word be on the increase. Let God's word become a priority, not an option. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why do you need the word to sustain? this fire. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, he says, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Why? Because it is the word that upholds and sustains anything meaningful. It is the word that upholds and sustains anything meaningful. He upholds all things, including this encounter, by the power of his word. In Psalm 119 and verse 116, he says, Uphold me according to thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. That's why you need the word to sustain this encounter. Because it is only the word that upholds, that has the ability to uphold all things, anything that is meaningful. Why do you need the word to sustain this encounter? Because, number two, the word of God is the source of everything that is good. If this encounter is good, the word of God is a source. Now, if you remain connected to the source, then you have the ability, you have the, you have the opportunity to keep it. In John chapter 1 and verse 3, he said, All things were made by the word, and there is nothing that is made that was not made by that word. John chapter 1 and verse 3. All things were made by him. Talking about the word. He says in John chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. And he says in verse 3, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So that word, the word is the source of that encounter. The devil takes that same source to sustain it. The moment you disconnect from the source, you dry up. The moment you disconnect yourself from your source, you dry up. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time and you dry up. My prayer for you today is that you remain connected forever. <laughs> Whatever disconnects men from their source will not have dominion over you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Whatever disconnects men from their source will not have dominion over you in the name of Jesus. Why do we need that word to sustain this encounter? Number three, it is the word that provides hope and comfort. Why? Because there will be a lot of attacks. There will be a lot of distractions. There will be a lot of things coming your way, events coming your way to disconnect you, to confuse you, to kill your hope. But it says the word 
is what provides hope and comfort. In Psalm 119, verses 49 and 50, it says, Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. For thy word has what? It has quickened me. So that word provides hope. That word provides comfort. When there are shakings here and there, you are you connected to that word, you remain unshaken. Because many a times, people lose their encounters because of shakings. Because of what? Shakings. And the shakings may come in different forms. Every time you receive God's word, Satan will come to test it. And God told Adam not to eat of that fruit, the fruit of that tree. And Adam went to tell Eve, this is what God has said. After that, Satan came to Eve to test her. He said, has God actually said? And then um, Eve said, I'm not even too sure. Maybe Adam didn't tell me the way God told him. And that was how she missed it. So, that encounter will be tested. But it takes the word to provide hope and comfort. That's why you need the word to sustain that encounter. You need the word to sustain that encounter. So, we must, therefore, create quality time for God's word. Quality time for God's word. Quality time for God's word. Not waiting only when it's service time. Quality time for God's word. Quality time. Through studying, through meditation, through hearing. Quality time. Every opportunity you have to receive God's word, what do you do? Jump at it. What do you do? Jump at it. What do you do? Jump at it. Praise the Lord. So you must be word addicted in order to sustain this encounter, receive that shilo. Let everyone know your addiction for God's word in 2013. You don't even need to wait for 2013. Beginning now. Beginning with now. Don't get lost in the activities of this festive season. Are you understanding me? Don't get lost in the activities of this festive season by laying aside God's word. No! I consider this season has been very crucial in determining happenings around you. Very crucial. Very crucial. You can eat, drink, and be merry and eat your life up. Praise the Lord. Very, very crucial. Don't be carried away by the activities of the season. Don't be carried away by travelings. Don't be carried away by social gatherings. No matter the appointment I have on Sunday, not because I'm a pastor, I mean, on, on Christmas, not because I'm a pastor, no matter the appointment I may have on Christmas Day, I will still come to church first. Every other appointment can wait. But you'll be surprised to know that someone will be cooking on Christmas Day. Christmas Day, I won't come to church. Why didn't you come to church? He said, I was cooking. Why? Because we're expecting guests. Because we're expecting what? We're expecting guests. So I was cooking. 
come to service first and let the guests come after. If the guests miss you cooking, let the guests go. If the guests can't wait, give the guests water to go. Because guests may come and go, guests cannot give you what the encounter has given you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, even this festive season, don't forget those words. Stay around this world. Those who camp around the world will always sustain the encounters. Because that encounter came by the word. As you keep camping around, as you keep camping around, as you keep camping around the word of God, you are empowered to keep that encounter. Hallelujah. May you receive grace for that today. May you receive grace for that today. May you receive grace for that today. In the name of Jesus. Say, I will give myself continually to the world. I will give myself continually to the world. I will stay steadfastly committed to the world. I will remain connected to the world. Therefore, Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, what are some of the things that happen when you give yourself over to the world and when you become addicted to the world in this season, I will find ourselves. Number one, you remain impactful. You remain what? Impactful. You remain impactful. In Isaiah chapter 16, verse 1 to 3, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover thee, and gross darkness will be upon the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, because they gave themselves over to the world. And what will happen? And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, the world, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. You remain relevant. You remain impactful. You don't lose, you don't lose color. As you give yourself over to the, to the world, when others are fading away from the scene, you still be on the scene. When others are losing address, they will still know you. May you not become a byword and a proverb in the year 2013. Throughout the year 2013, your impact shall be on the increase. Your impact shall be on the increase. Your relevance shall know no end. In the name of Jesus, you remain impactful. He said, even though there is darkness everywhere, but because of the world. He said, they shall come to the brightness of thy rising. They shall come to thy light. Number two, what happens when you are on fire in the world? Number two, you enjoy all around multiplication. In Acts chapter 6 and verse 7, it says, And the word of God increased. And what happened? And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly. Because as the word of God is increasing in you, things are multiplying around you. As the word of God is increasing in you, increasing in your life, as you are growing in the world, things are multiplying. Good things are multiplying around you. The word of God increased. And what was the effect? The number of disciples multiplied. As the word is increasing, there is multiplication going on everywhere. Multiplication, multiplication in your business. Multiplication in the works of your hands. Multiplication in the effects, signs and wonders. Multiplication everywhere. Why? Because the word is increasing. What does it mean? As the word is decreasing, the effect is fading away. So let the word be on the increase in your life. Let what? 
Let the word be on the increase in your life. So that you enjoy all around multiplication. Acts chapter 12 and verse 24. Acts chapter 12 and verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. It grew and multiplied. It grew and multiplied. Number three, what happens? Number three effect of the increase of God's word in your life. Number three, when the word increases in your life, you command dominion. You command what? Dominion. He says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4, he says, where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what wears thou? Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4, where the word of the Lord is, of the king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what dwells thou? He has command. He has dominion. Those things that dominated him before, he now has dominion over them. Why? Because the word has increased. Why? Because everything is subject to the word. In Acts chapter 19 and verse 20, he says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. As the word grew, they began to prevail. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. And prevailed. Throughout the year 2013, you are prevailing. Whatever had dominion over you before now, as you give yourself over to the world and the world is increasing, uh, increasing in you, I see your dominion over that thing being established. I see your dominion over that thing being established. If you believe it, shout it out, amen. So it gives you dominion. It gives you dominion. Praise the Lord. What am I saying in essence? The encounter at Shiloh was to turn you into another man. He brought us something new in you. But you see, whatever God has said you are, it will take responsibility from your end to become. Whatever God has said you are, we take responsibility from your end to become. For instance, he said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. Matthew 5, 14, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set upon the hill cannot be hidden. Now, he said in John chapter 10 and verse 34, he says, uh, I have said ye are gods unto whom the word of the Lord came. I have said ye are gods unto whom the word of the Lord came. But well, you see, that responsibility is in the world. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, he said, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of God, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of his scornful. He said, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And now what will happen? And he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth the fruit in season. He shall be. When he takes delight in the world, then he shall be. When he takes delight in the world, then he shall be. When you delight in the world, then you become the light to your world. When you take delight in his world, then you become the light of your world. What am I saying? Take delight in his world. And that light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Take delight in God's world. Take delight in God's world. Let God's world excite you. The moment you lose excitement for God's word, you are heading for exile. Let God's word excite you. Please, camp around his word more than ever before. Camp around his word more than ever before. Camp around this world more than ever before. Let nothing excite you. Let nothing take your attention more than the world these days. That's your only saving grace. Take delight in this world. But his delight 
is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate. How often? How often? Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. In his law does he meditate day and night. Taking delight in God's word. That's the key. My prayer for you is this. That you will constantly be drawn to his word from today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, that does not make you a pastor. It only makes you, it only makes you a good Christian. Camping around the world does not mean you are a pastor. Camping around the world only makes you a good and responsible Christian. It only means that you are a good and a responsible Christian. Are you set for that today? That grace is released upon you now. I said that grace is released upon you now. That grace is released upon you now. In the name of Jesus, jump to your feet. Hallelujah. Lord, release that grace upon me now to take delight in your word. I take delight in your word. Go ahead and pray for that grace. And lift up your hands and ask God for that grace this morning. Lord, I receive that grace this morning. I receive that grace this morning. I receive that grace this morning to take delight in your word, to be constantly drawn to your word, to be excited at your word, to love thy word, to esteem your word far above my necessary food. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, help me, help me, help me. In the name of Jesus, the psalmist said, he said, I have esteemed thy word far above my necessary food. I have esteemed, I have placed it above. When God's word becomes your greatest need, the every other need is met. Jesus told uh, Matt, I said, Thou careful, but said, maybe, maybe I was just a good part. I wish I not be taken away from her. One thing is needful. One thing is needful. What you need now is that word. That's the most needful thing that meets every other need. That's the most needful thing that meets every other need. That's the most needful thing that meets every other need. Lord, I go for the most needful thing. Go ahead and pray now. I make a choice for the most needful thing. I make a choice for the word, which is the most needful thing. I make a choice for the word. And as I make a choice for that most needful thing, every other need in my life is met. Go ahead and begin to pray. I make a choice this morning for the most needful thing. I make a choice this morning for the most needful thing. And as I do, let every other need of my life be met supernaturally. In the name of Jesus, my need for healing, my need for breakthrough, my need for deliverance, my need for miracles, my need for a miracle job, miracle husband, miracle wife, children. Let every other need of my life be met this morning as I make a choice for the most needful thing. I align myself with your word this morning. I align myself with your word this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we close this service this morning, I'd like to make this call, this altar call for as many of you who have not yet encountered Jesus. What a time to have an encounter with him. You are here this morning, you are running your life on your own. You are here this morning, you are tired of the way life is treating you. You have heard other sharing testimonies, but your life is full of woes, it's full of sorrows, it's full of questions, unanswered questions, trouble everywhere. You are tired, there is a way out this morning, and that's way, that way is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man, there is no other way other than him. You are here this morning, you are here to make a decision for Jesus, I want to pray for you. Wherever you are out there in the congregation, you want to say yes to Jesus, just raise up your right hand. Wherever you are out there in the congregation, raise up your right hand, you want to say yes to Jesus, you want to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Can I see your hand raised up this morning? Can I see your hand raised up this morning? But as you are also here this morning, you might have given your life to Jesus before, but you are backslidden. 
I want to be restored. What a time to be restored. Don't let this year end the way it is with you. You can return to him. You can say, Lord Jesus, I return to you today. I repent of my sins. I ask for forgiveness. I return to you today. Forgive me and accept me as your child again. You are here this morning. You want to make a decision for Jesus or you want to be restored to him and your hand is raised up. Quickly just rush out here to the altar. Rush out to the altar. Let me pray for you. Rush down there quickly. You want to make a decision for Jesus. Rush down there quickly. You want to give your life to Jesus. You are tired of the way 2012 was with you. 2013 is expected to be better. But only when you are connected to Jesus. Only when you are connected to Jesus. Quickly rush out. Jesus is waiting for you. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. You are still there indecisive. You don't know what to do. Perhaps you are saying to yourself, should I go or should I not go? Yes, go. Should I go or should I not go? That's the devil speaking to you. Don't listen to the devil. Come now. Satan wants to cheat you. Satan wants to keep you in prison. Satan wants to keep you locked up. Satan wants to keep you under. Satan wants to keep oppressing you. That's why he doesn't want you to come. But you can run away and be free this morning. You can run away and be free this morning. You can run away. You can break loose and be free this morning. You can break loose and be free this morning. And have life under total control. Life can be sweeter. Life can be better. Life can be sweeter. Life can be better. Only when you are connected to him. Are you sure you are coming? Are you sure you are coming? There are still quite a number of you out there who have not made a decision for him. Quickly come out now. Jesus is waiting for you. Jesus is waiting for you. Keep clapping. They are coming. They are coming. If you are coming, please run out quickly. Run out quickly. Rush out. Rush out. If you are coming, please be very fast. Be in a hurry. Be in a hurry. Be in a hurry. Be in a hurry this morning. Send your word, oh Jehovah. Are you coming? Send your word into my heart. Don't listen soul. to what the devil is saying. In Come quickly. In the name of Jesus, send your word. Send your word. Send your word, oh Jehovah. Send your word into my soul. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, while we are praying for these ones, you are still out there. You are yet to make that decision. Probably you are at the point of uh, indecision. You don't know what to do. Satan is saying, well, you can wait till next Sunday. You can wait for the next service. You don't have, you don't, you don't, you don't have any guarantee that you'll be alive till the next service. So today is the day that God has brought you here to make this decision for him this morning. Why not jump at it? You are still there and you want to come out now. Quickly come out. I'm waiting for you. God bless you. God bless you. Quickly come out. Quickly come out. You don't have any guarantee of seeing the next service day. Today is your day. Are you coming? Are you coming? Yes, they are coming. They are coming. Quickly rush out here. Rush out here. Rush out here. Rush out here. Jesus is Lord. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They are still coming. Please, please be fast. Be very fast. Be very fast. God bless you. Now, those of you in the front, lift up your right hands. Bow your heads and lift up your right hands and repeat these words after me. Lord.